Hello, my name is Risa Megabar. I'm going to be presenting 10 Indigenous Science in the Philippines. The first Indigenous Science we're going to talk about is medicine. An ethnopharmacological study of the Tadyawans of Mindoro Land, Philippines was conducted in May 2000 to April 2001. The study included documentation of the ethnopharmacological knowledge and indigenous healing practices and collection of voucher specimens of plants used by the Tadyawans. A total of 114 plants were documented. Some medicinal plants used were the lubagan, which helped with stomach ache when you chew the stem, the dita, which helped with the lost bowel movement by boiling the bark of dita tree and drinking the juice, and the mayana leaves, which helped with asthma if you extract and drink the juice. Another indigenous science is preserving of food. Itag is the general term used in Cordelia about the native's traditional way of preserving pork. It is an indigenous slab of a big slice of pork that is cured in salt for about a week or longer, then air dried under the sun or smoked for several weeks, even months, or both. Our third indigenous science is technology. Weaving in the Philippines dates back to the 13th century. It makes use of local cotton, fibers, abaca, and pineapple as raw material. Today, there are about 450 weaving groups across Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, making up a population of roughly 5,000 and producing a total revenue of about 150 million pesos. Another indigenous science is prediction of weather. Among the documented weather lore, respondents claim that the unusual behavior of ants, earthworms, dragonflies, dogs, frogs, and birds usually predict an upcoming rain, typhoon, or bad weather. The ripening and shedding of fruits and plants such as physic nut, bancal, and singuelas were also considered by farmers as reliable indicators of the onset of rainy season. A long parallel band of feathery clouds and moon with rings were also important clues to predict weather. Agriculture was another indigenous science in the Philippines. The Ifugao rice terraces are the priceless contribution of Philippine ancestors to humanity. The rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras is an outstanding example of an evolved living cultural landscape that can be traced as back as far as two millennials ago in the pre-colonial Philippines. Sweden farming, also known as slash and burning farming or shifting cultivation and known as kainging in the Philippines, has been practiced for centuries in the Philippines. Traditionally, indigenous farmers would move from area to area to farm, leaving their fields to live fallow for years before returning and planting crops. Selecting good seeds for planting is another example of an indigenous science in the Philippines. Traditional or indigenous seeds are those produced, growing, or living naturally in a particular country or climate. They are seeds that have been selected and managed by local people in the local growing environment. Some of the characteristics which can help the sector find good plants for seeds are the vigor and health of the plant, resistant to pests and diseases, time of fruit bearing, yield, characteristics of fruit and seeds like color, shape, size, and texture, and much more. Moving on, we can talk about building local irrigation. The dramatic terrace systems which have become a tourist attraction in the Ifugo region of the Philippines are only the tip of what we can call the irrigation iceberg. Under the surface, so to speak, is an indigenous tradition of irrigated agriculture that contains the technical and managerial expertise to keep the physical infrastructure functioning and the crops growing. Indigenous systems of irrigated agriculture represent sustainable solutions to the demands of intensive crop production. This is good news because indigenous irrigation systems as a group represent successful adaptations to local environments. Now we're going to talk about classifying different types of soil for planting. Soil classification in the Convergence Workshop was introduced to test the farmer's ability to use the basic human senses, sight, hearing, smell, and touch in identifying soil attributes useful for the classifications of soils and for making farm decisions. The farmer's concept of soil classification is primarily based on intergenerational transfer of experience in changing perceptions of the degree, importance, and ways to use the land. Decisions are made in such a way that they conform with the changing level of satisfaction and needs from the use of the farm. Another indigenous science is producing wine from tropical fruits. 
Unlike in Italy or France, Philippines has its quintessential fruit wine based on produce like coconut, strawberry, rice, mangoes, sugarcane, or duhat. Grapes are not an option in the country due to unsuitable climate and soil acidity. Nevertheless, it has gained popularity in the foreign markets due to its uniqueness. One of the most famous Philippine-made wines is the traditional tuba that is commonly prepared with a cloudy appearance and a hint of reddish-brown color. It came from a young coconut sap and is added with Baroque wood to give off the hue. One of Baguio's finest products is the strawberry wine, which is an invention made from the region's prominent produce. Our last indigenous science we're going to talk about is keeping the custom of growing plants and vegetables. The Philippines is lucky to still have vast areas of land for agriculture and forest use, and due to its rich soil, diverse indigenous vegetables can be found in many parts of the country. Earlier, a project conducted by the Bureau of Agricultural Research in coordination with the World Vegetable Center launched the promotion of at least 10 indigenous Philippine vegetables. These are the alagbati, the ampalaya, hempabao, kuliatis, labong, upong, malungay, bako, saluyot, and talanam. Alright, these are all the 10 indigenous sciences and technology in the Philippines. Thank you for watching!